everyone and welcome to another video. I am Simply G and today I'm going to be talking about all of the manga and like light novels and comics and other things that I got in March for 2020. I hope this video finds you safe and healthy in these uncertain times and rather than spend too long on this introduction as always I'll just get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy. So first off is an item that is actually a Japanese volume. Uh, people who have been following my channel for a long time know that I don't really buy Japanese manga ever because I don't like owning something that I can't read. The only um, you know time that I do is usually with an extra. Um, that's usually art books and things of that nature that comes with a limited version of a manga. So that is also the case here and so the volume is the limited edition or the limited release edition of one of my favorite series which is being released in English although digital only um, and fi recently finished its most recent anime adaptation and that is Chai Fury. This is volume 40. You can see it has this like slip on it and it has this design on the back here and that's because this release actually came with a set of postcards which if you so people who followed the channel for a long time know that I'm a huge fan of Chihai Furu. I adore the series that's one of my favorite not only sports series but just kind of series of all time I love it and so there's actually no art book or any sort of collected art pieces aside from an exhibition um, book quote unquote uh, that was put out a couple of years ago so um, I wanted to get this whilst it was still available in some limited capacity and so the art cards look like this I really love I mean I can't really exacerbate how much I love Chai Fru. this is the actual cover to this here and I think it's quite cute how they have the daddy bear and snow maru kind of costume overlay and I really, really like how they've done this because, um, so we have some here and then this is the last one that has kind of foil printing on it as well, which is very cool. But I really like how they've done it because if you slot them in the back, like they were stored initially, I can bring my arm over, you actually get, just Like a little frame for them and you can switch out whichever artwork you want I think it's a pretty cool addition and generally how I will be displaying this book because again I'm a big Chai Fru fan <laughs> a big sucker for extras like this and uh, until I can get a proper art book <laughs> then I'm going to have to collect beautiful Chahaya artwork this way <laughs> Um, but yeah, kind of just a, in a, a little addition to the other stuff that I bought this month. Next is a comic, and I don't often buy these, mainly because I don't read a whole huge amount of them. And this is one that I think every time that I show off a comic, it tends to be because it was a Kickstarter that I uh, supported, or some. rarely they're, they're ones that I bought for any such reason but this is one of those where it was a kickstarter this is the first volume of an ongoing web web comic i believe called bookworms um you can't let me if i can just adjust uh and this is by lorena garcia and this is an ongoing web comic about a group of librarians who live in this kind of alternate world modern world quote unquote um that are trying to solve a mystery of who is putting counterfeit books into the major national library they're trying to solve that mystery meanwhile there's other mysteries bubbling around as well it's quite good i really have enjoyed the story of what i've read so far um you know i'm a big sucker for kind of book 
related and librarian related stories <laughs> there's been a couple of those in manga recently as well so you know you know um and this i backed a long time ago well not that long ago probably a year and a half ago um and his it's had a couple issues so they and you know just various various issues so i finally got my copy and i think they might actually be shipping out replacements as well because there is a printing error in this book so who knows i might be getting another copy as well um, one of the extras that came with the Kickstarter was a bookmark, like so. And you can see the art here. It's quite lovely. Um, it's, it's kind of faux European. I don't know. I don't know. And then also you get your own library card that you can pretend that you're a member of the library. And uh, as someone who has four real library cards, <laughs> um, this is just kind of, you know, a cool little extra. And I think it's a nice extra for this style of um, Kickstarter because it's not super expensive to produce, but it's very in theme with the book and the story and the characters. Uh, I think it's just really well thought out. I, I find that sometimes Kickstarters can be a bit too ambitious and thus can't fulfill the things that they wanted to later on. But print Kickstarter, like book printing, publishing, especially like webcomic publishing, I haven't really had an issue with that as of yet. We've had manga publishing uh, Kickstarters that have been a total mess and are still a total mess. But that's, I think, when a company tries to get involved in something that's much more focused on independent creators and, and like, independent crowdfunding. I don't know. There's a lot of different layers. And also mismanagement, which can happen with smaller, pub smaller uh, Kickstarters as well. But I find that there's kind of a formula and not too much can go wrong generally with most comics kickstarters so yeah i don't really back a lot of kickstarters anymore um but if it's uh, something that i already like or if it's from a creator that i already enjoy then i will and this is just one of them and after saying that i don't back a lot of kickstarters anymore <laughs> i have another kickstarter item to show off this is a little bit different though in that it's not a comic it's actually quite interesting and i think it, a lot of people who watch my videos may be interested in getting their own copy of this which i believe is still they are still selling copies of these so you can but this is the very first print release um or print issue of neo japanism um which is spring 2020 if it will show up so you can see number one and if for anyone who's not familiar uh neo japanism used to be a website that would basically talk about a whole bunch of like really weird niche topics and things in japan sort of as an educated discussion um they have or had a lot of um, essay style content and it was really to promote discussion and interest into Japan as a whole and things like that. The, the website started back in 2007 and continued on until 2017-ish, maybe a little later. Over that time, obviously, the nature of the internet changed a lot it was it's now a lot more open and global of a platform but it meant that small niche websites and blogs like this um, were being found by the masses and japan itself wasn't really or isn't really um othered as much as it used to be there's a lot more understanding of japan if not as a culture than as a tourist spot People are more aware of like the various aspects of Japan compared to 
maybe what they were back when they started the website and when they felt it was necessary to talk about like little weird niche thing parts of it. Um, and so in order to make it, they had made a decision to transition to print in so far as it would be a, I think print media and stuff like zines, it reminds me a lot of where it really is for a smaller community and you can, it also kind of reminds me of, um, I can't remember, uh, the, the full macadamia that's the word I'm looking for the macadamia journals that are released um, which has a lot of academic texts and and articles and things like that on various otaku Japanese culture stuff this is similar but it's sort of more focused on Japan as a whole this particular issue in is in fact focused on Showa so Tokyo in the Showa period, um, sort of where people would eat and how life was and how, um, what was kind of the norm, which obviously is not inherently information that everyone would be interested in, but for people with a academic interest in Japan, um, or who have just kind of an overwhelming interest in history, Asian history, um, modern history, then this may be something that you are interested in outside of like the pop culture stuff as well. Um, and if you watched the, my other video of, um, my anime, I do talk about a particular series, which is actually set in the Showa period, which is Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju. And this is about that period of Japanese history which was from 1926 up until 1989, I believe. Um, and so that's a huge, huge stretch of time, <laughs> understandably, uh, almost six or more than six decades. Um, and so a lot can change in a country and a lot did change in a country over that period. And it's so fascinating to see how much, you know, society and government and and the global community shifted over over that period in addition to the book itself which is very beautiful and I will link um, th where you can get your own copy if you are wanting one in the description below in addition to this though I also got three posters a three posters but they're like I don't quite know when I got mine they were quite crumpled they weren't uh, package very well um they were just folded um and they're kind of this block art um style which is very you know it's very trendy uh <laughs> but it's probably not something that I'm going to be using and they were printed on just like a3 paper not really poster paper or anything like that so if you're wanting like a high quality poster or something I wouldn't necessarily say that that's the way to do it but I didn't buy, you know, I didn't, I didn't contribute to this crowdfunder because I wanted a poster. I wanted this book. Um, I also got two blank notebooks, which are pretty cool. They're again done in the same style and they are completely blank. No lines, nothing. Um, which are handy. You know, I, I find them handy. I use that stuff. I put those sorts of books into my purse and stuff. Um, but yeah, really, really cool little book um, for me as someone who is very interested in all of the things that I talked about. But I find the show period especially very interesting. Um, then this was a no brainer. I really love this style of neo Japanism's content. I did used to read quite a few of their actual posting on their website I haven't for years though I don't even remember how I heard about this I think I heard or found out about it on Twitter who knows I don't know um <laughs> but I'm really really happy that they are still wanting to put out content and that they are making this an option and I find that reference and informative and academic style 
of work that is focused on a particular subject, like in Showa Tokyo in this book, um, is is easier or is nice to have as a referential item within a library, so in print. Um, but yeah, so so yeah, really really happy with this one. It, it turned out wonderfully, and I can't wait until their second second release, which I assume will be summer twenty twenty, if things are go well <laughs> who knows the state of the world is quite tumultuous right now so who knows next I have some art books which is really exciting because I don't buy them that often but when I do I actually bought all of these as a gift to myself for my graduation <laughs> um so I bought them back in February, um, and then obviously with international shipping it took a while for them to get to me, but super duper happy to finally have all of them. The first is a art book, special book, whatever you want to call it, um, from a creator who is a BL mangaka. I own, or I used to own quite a few of her works, now I think I only want, own one or two of them. Um, not because they're bad inherently but because unfortunately as the way goes with BL publishers it's not always certain whether or not things will be finished publishing but this was a book an art book for her most recent series the one that just recently finished um I don't know I think she has a series ongoing right now but this is the one that most recently finished um and that is Noble Colors by Shoko Hidaka this is for her series Blue Morning which is a BL historical romance between a young man and his like aide, his butler, whatever. Um, obviously like a, a <laughs> kind of master and vassal style of story um, set in kind of early, late, late 19th century Japan Taisho period stuff. Um, which is actually 20th century Japan, but kind of late Meiji, early Taisho period Japan. <laughs> and it's, it's very good. Like if you're into the master vassal style of, um, um, kind of trope for BL, then check it out. It is released in its entirety in eight volumes by Sublime, which is Viz's BL imprint. It's good. It's good. Um, but the, this book, we have a lot of color artwork at the very beginning, which is very lovely. I like Hiraka's art a lot, and I like her storytelling a lot, because it's kind of quieter and more methodical than I think people expect. And then we have, like, extra comics as well here, and then more, like, a lot of this is more so like uncolored works and then of course mangaka interviews and like how certain things were done so yeah it's a really lovely little book to have if you are a fan of the series obviously um you know it's not one that I would recommend to people who aren't familiar with Hidaka or Blue Morning um but seeing that the series did just finish in English a couple months ago. I wanted to get this and really happy to have it. It is also kind of like one of the shorter art books in my collection, which is nice. I find BL art books can be a little bit more compact. I don't know quite why. At least the recent ones that I've been buying have been sort of A5 size versus A4. Um, who knows? Who knows? Now that everyone's left because they're not interested in BL, <laughs> I'll continue with my other art books, which are not BL, just by the way. So first off, I don't know, I guess this came as a promotion. I don't know where this book came from, all right? I don't know if it was included as an extra with a magazine. I don't know if it was a limited release with like an event or something. I, I honestly have no idea. 
Um, it came with a... So maybe there's information on this flyer, this promotional thing, that I can't read because I can't read Japanese. Let me know, because I got this. I found it, and I only discovered it on Mandarake, which is where all of these books come from. Um, art books, at least. This is the Gangsta Artworks collection. Obviously from the manga series Gangsta by Kosuke. Um, and this is full of her artwork for the series and I I don't I mean I love her artwork I love her the manga I think it's a fantastic series and everyone's very beautiful um, beautiful is the interesting word everyone's very hot <laughs> but it's a really interesting like if you like dark gritty style stories it kind of reminds me a lot of Black Lagoon um, the anime is decently solid for an unfinished work the manga is great, although I think people forget about, or d did forget about it in the interim that it was on hiatus. Um, I don't know if it's off of hiatus. It came off of hiatus, and I don't know if it's on hiatus again. But I love Gangsta. I find it marvelous. And I just, I don't know where this book came from. I, I could not tell you. I have zero clue as to where... <laughs> where on earth this is from but if you're wanting your own copy maybe check Mandarake or check um, Yahoo Auctions things like that because I don't know where else it would be from I I have to assume it's from a magazine like a, an extra with a magazine that's my my strongest clue maybe it came with a volume of the manga but I feel it's too big to come with like a limited volume of the monk. I just, I don't know. If somebody knows, please tell me because I'd love to have that information. Um, but it is a really, really nice little book. It has a lot of really great artwork in there. And of course, um, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, I think. It's not super expensive if you do manage to hunt it down, but it is literally called Gangsta Artworks. So maybe search for that on Mandarake. I don't, I don't know, no man, it's, it's an anomaly, but I'm very happy that I discovered it. I'm even happier that I was able to purchase it. Um, and yeah, so this again is, was kind of my, my graduation gift to myself, along with the previous book and the next book that I'm going to be showing off and another one that hasn't arrived to me yet. Um, so actually no. I, I don't know. I've got a couple art books. Um, I had Hanako-kun as well with this order. So yes, it would have been... Um, it would have been... I have all of them, but I have another art book coming for next month. So be excited for that. Um, yeah, so check it out. And uh, if you're a fan of Gangsta, it's very, very, very worth hunting, hunting down. Finally, for art books, we have one from a mangaka or a artist of whom I own all of his art books because I love his art style a whole lot. Um, this is the most recent one, and this is an interesting little thing. Um, so last year, were, there was a series, a wonderful anime series called Dororo. It's an it's the modern adaptation of the manga by Osamu Tezuka and obviously as a Tezuka manga um, it it did get updated both well majorly visually for the anime adaptation it also had kind of more elements expanded on because it is a very short manga um, but the character designer was a mangaka called Hiroyuki Asada, who you may know as the creator of Letter B. He also had a basketball manga that we never, we never got the manga for, but I think we got the OVA on DVD in English. I don't know why, but we did. Um, I have read Letter B. I enjoyed it for what it was. I used to have it in the collection, not anymore. Um, but I love his art style so much. So I already have his two previous art books. Um, I think Water is the general one and then Shine is his letter B one. But this is 
his Tezuka album. So we have um, Hyakimaru on the cover here, who is kind of the main, one of the main characters of Dororo. And I don't know what came first, but these are the designs that they used for, I'm sure they, he designed them for the show, that's not what I mean, but I'm, I don't know whether or not uh, anyway, I'll, I'll explain in a moment. So like with a lot of Asada's books, there's a lot of fold-outs. It's that same artwork on the front. And I just, oh, I love, so we have Dororo there and Hyakimaru in the longer poster. Nothing on the other side. Um, and then here we have Hyakimaru and then Nietzsche from letter B, so obviously his other series, but this book and kind of these Tezuka redesigns were done for a anniversary project, right? So it's not just, I mean, this is all Dororo stuff, but it's not purely Dororo artwork in here. So we have, this is still Dororo, right? And oh, I just love how he colors his artwork. I just love it. Here we have character sketches, obviously character design for the show, but later, later, I'm gonna skip all of this stuff because it's, there's a lot of it and it's interesting. And definitely if you're an artist, it, I find it very interesting, but you can see here, there was a cultural festival for Tezuka's works in between 2016 and 2018 and I think that's when a lot of this artwork was made and so obviously there are this is his other non Dororo artwork so we have um, Blackjack there's also Unico and um, Kimba or like White Lion there's Astro Boy as well so it's it's as I said I don't know whether or not because he did his art pieces for this project that he was chosen for to do the character designs or if that was already in production and just happened to be additional stuff that he I don't know I'm sure other people know I don't let let me know because I I don't um but I think it's really cool that he has so much Tezuka inspired work now and I just I I love his style so I'm not going to complain um beautiful beautiful book again from Mandarake and I think it was sold through Mandarake for international customers so it is like full price um but if you're a fan of Asada if you're a fan of Dororo the most recent anime adaptation of it then be sure to check this one out because it's interesting and I think it, it has a lot of the art used there, um, a lot of the character designs obviously, um, stuff from the openings and endings, as well as other Tezuka characters who are very, very recognizable. And it's a hefty, hefty book. And yeah, again, I'm just a big fan of Asada's work, so when I heard that this book existed, I knew that I was going to pick it up at some point. So first for manga, we have um, a series that I bought secondhand from a local seller. It's not in pristine condition, but it's still like it's fine condition for me. Um, and this is a series that I was recommended by my very good friend and fellow manga tuber and my co-host on Read Right to Left that um, to read, Ray from Whimsical Pictures, she talked about the series in response to a question about a romance manga for hopeless romantics. And she really she, she really sold the series. Um, she really enjoys the series and I hadn't read it. I'd heard really good things about it for years and years and years. Um, I also didn't realize that the creator, like, the creator had done something else that I read, so I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And 
when um, I went to one of the libraries that I frequent, I saw that they had the entirety of the series available. So I read it through that library first and absolutely 100% agree. I, abs I adore this series. I love it a whole lot. And then coincidentally, um, I was listing some items to actually sell on Gumtree, which is basically like Craigslist here in Australia. And I saw that somebody was selling not a fully complete set, but a, a very almost complete set of the series and decided to pick it up because it was cheap. And it was one that after having finished was like, I need that. I need to own this uh, in the collection. There's a couple different releases for the series. I read it through the omnibus versions, but these are the singles. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that difference as well. Um, but this is High School Debut by Kazune Kawahara. This is the same mangaka as My Love Story, which is a very popular romance manga for guys and girls. I think most people really, really enjoy that series. I really enjoy that series. Um, but this is her earlier work. And so this is the story of a high school girl who's just started high school. <laughs> um, and throughout her younger years, she was very, she was very much a tomboy. She was very sporty. She, you know, really focused on ath her athletics. She was on the softball team and so now that she's reached high school she wants to have her high school debut she wants to you know become popular and beautiful and find herself a boyfriend um and so she's trying all of these things she dresses up in absolutely crazy looking fashion she's trying to follow all of the tips that you know girls magazines and everything are telling her is you know hot right now or land you a boyfriend and it's just not working for her but she kind of goes and stands um stands around in her her gaudy outfits or her outfits that just don't really suit her um at, in public places um usual kind of pick up spots to no avail. You know, she's, she just doesn't know what she's doing wrong. And so whilst kind of being dejected after, the thing is she's very positive, she's very optimistic, and she's like, well, I just need to, you know, train harder, basically. I just need to do more research. I need to find out. I, I can do this. I know that, like, there's some way that I can do this. Um, but she's she's about to head home one day and she runs into this boy who she had kind of overheard um talking or he was with his friends and they were talking about how um this guy was really good at knowing what girl like what suits a girl or like what she should wear to accentuate her best features and things like you know stuff like that um and she kind of follows him, runs into him, and begs him to become her coach to help her become popular. And so he um, agrees kind of um, half-heartedly. Uh, and she finds out that he's an upperclassman, her senpai at school. And she's also, her his younger sister is in his class, or in her class, and all sorts of things. But the early, you know, it, it very quickly changes from like, okay, I'll, I'll help you become popular, find a boyfriend, just so long as you don't fall in love with me, to them being in a relationship and then kind of navigating that and navigating their, their friends' relationships and things like that. And I, one of the things that Ray mentioned and that I also really appreciated was the fact that it's a story not about falling in love and getting into the relationship necessarily but it's a story about being within a relationship and trying to make it work when you are two very different personalities and but despite that being very well suited and you know the compromises that everybody has to have when you're in a relationship and just working around and working with 
another person and the, per the person you assumedly care about. It's really, really, really good. I think if you like my love story, I 100% recommend this one. I find the main character just really, really likable. Harana, she's just great. And also her her boyfriend or her coach early on, Yo, is he's very different and he's kind of a little bit acerbic. Um, he's not really the friendliest of guys and I'm not really a fan of like the bad boy trope or anything like that. But I, I find that his hesitancy and his sort of social awkwardness is quite well done. He never feels mean. He never feels like he genuinely doesn't want to be around her or his friends or her friends or he has to deal with a lot of stuff, a lot of drama. Not not his drama, all, everyone else's drama. Um, and he has his reasons as to why he, initially he doesn't want to be in a relationship. But I think they work very well. At, I mean, opposites attract is is kind of well known well known phrase uh but it's very true and and i think it's great in showing how when you are in a relationship you complement each other and hopefully if you're not super strong at something the person you're with can help you with that and support you or and help you get better with that or you know just be that in your in place of your own attempts at it it's just it's really really good it's really 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 good it's a little bit harder to find though in the singles because these singles are old so we have volume one volume two volume three volume four volume five volume six Volume seven, volume eight, volume nine, volume ten, and volume eleven. It's also really funny. <laughs> and if you know me and or if you know kind of the shoujo manga because this is an older shoujo manga there's some tropes um i actually it avoids a lot of the tropes that i dislike in this era of manga um which is good it reminds me in some ways of lovely complex which is a series i absolutely adore it's very near and dear to my heart and the relationship isn't identical in those two mangas but i think that they show off that being in a relationship aspect well or that complementary personality well um but so the single or the series itself the main series it finishes in 13 volumes but then there's an additional two volumes that are set a year later um so so the whole series in its entirety is 15 volumes. Viz initially printed the 13 volumes in singles and only ever printed volumes 14 and 15 in the omnibus format later. So if you're wanting to pick it up, it might be an idea to just pick up the omnibus format. At least from my research, that's the case because I haven't found any, any copies anywhere anywhere on the internet that 14 and 15 got a singles release i don't think they did so in my case and i didn't know that before purchasing this it doesn't purchasing this it doesn't really matter to me i will probably finish or finish picking up the volumes that i need in the singles and then i'll i will purchase the last on the bus just to get those last two two volumes um but it is really wonderful. Um, it's very funny. Like, it's a romantic comedy with heavy emphasis on the comedy. Um, ha again, Harana and Yo are great characters. I think there's an interesting dynamic between all of the characters, not just the ones in romantic relationships. And again, I think that there's a great conversation 
like in my love story about the necessity of being in a relationship, like how, especially in high school, people feel like they have to be in a relationship. Um, this character here in particular, like Harano's are always worried that she's doesn't have a boyfriend or like she should help her find her own boyfriend. And like with Suna in my love story, she's just not interested. It's like, don't worry about me. I'm really happy that you're happy and you're in love and that's great. You don't, I'm not like, you don't have to worry about me. I, I don't feel like I need to be in a relationship. And that's one of the great things I, I ha think of Kawahara's manga just in general. Between this and my love story, I think she's explored all the, th all the various types of relationships people can be in, or at least the generally healthy type <laughs> of relationships that people can be in. And I, it's nice to have, in my opinion, in a romance manga, that character that doesn't need romance to feel fulfilled in their life or their existence or whatever because you know it there's it's so often in in shoujo manga and romance manga that it's it has its own phrase like pair the spares where everybody ends up you know in love with somebody and in a happy relationship and happily ever after in high school immediately because we got to just wrap up all these side characters and there's definitely series where I, the side couples I have no problem with and I also enjoy, um, you know, don't get me wrong, it's not inherently a bad thing, but I don't think it should be a necessary thing. And I like that Kawahara challenges it. Um, but yeah, I, I thank you for the recommendation, Ray. I loved it. Really happy to, I don't, I don't know where I'm going to put this, but I'm really happy to have it in the collection and I'm so glad that I finally did give it, have the opportunity to read it and give it the chance that it deserved. Um, not that I was expecting to not like it or that I didn't want to read it or anything like that. It's just, it had been on my to read list for so long. I just didn't ever think I'd get around to it and that real that recommendation really was the you know encouragement that I needed to to get to it um and I'm so happy that I did and I hope people do check it out especially if you are a fan of like my love story or lovely complex um it, it has that sort of vibe um yeah it's just it's just really really good also kind of skip beat in the loose way just like the comedy aspect of it it's not as comedic as skip beat but harana reminds me a lot of kyoko so yeah anyway next is another series that i got a couple of volumes of i've i have had some of the volumes of this in my collection for a long time this is another one that i've been or i've read in its entirety through my library love and decided to pick up physically for the collection um, over the last week not week over the last like month or so um and i think it might it may even be exacerbated now by coronavirus and stuff um but over the last month or so amazon has had and I, i'm sure they do this on a regular basis but i haven't noticed it so much um in the same sense on amazon australia as um, I, I assume it happens in the US. Um, but there are some volumes of manga that are like super duper cheap. Super duper cheap. And I'm like, what? Why? Like, I'm talking five Australia, like five or six Australian dollars cheap, which is a huge discount. Um, new. And, you know, with Prime, it's free shipping and all of that. So I was like, what? Why? I mean, I'm not complaining because I need some of these books, but I'm just confused as to why. Um, so these are some of those books that were just really, really discounted over the last couple, you know, probably early March time. Uh, and this is Dawn of the Arcana. So we have volume seven, volume eight, and volume 
nine. These are all, um, well, this series is done by Rayatoma, who you may be familiar with her recent series, which also finished um, just a little while ago, which is The Water Dragon's Bride. And this is, oh, I really enjoy this one. Um, but this is a kind of low fantasy series about a princess who is married off to a neighboring kingdom. She has bright red hair, um, which is sort of a, a scandalous for the royalty. They are expected to have you know, pure black, beautiful hair. It's a sign of pedigree or whatever. So she's a shame on her home kingdom. They marry her off to um, a neighboring prince. And initially they don't get along very well, but slowly she comes to understand him more as a person and understand who he is outside of the expectations of his own family and royal um, you know crown and things like that um, also she is accompanied by her longtime friend and confidant um, Loki that's his name who's on this cover here uh, and he is a demi-human so he has animal uh, features, he's got animal ears and things like that, and they are the the slave class of this um, this world. They are used in, you know, physical labor and military and stuff like that. Um, but having grown up with him and being his friend for so long, she is in tune to the the suffering of them, and so a lot of her motivations is to abolish the slavery and like ownership of demi-humans within their, her new newly found kingdom um, and her home kingdom as well um, and so there's kind of a conflict with her initially and her husband who does who just wasn't really aware of the problem and then later they join forces along with Loki to kind of do that but again it's against the societal pressure and all of these things meanwhile our main character Nakaba this princess she also has this power called the arcana of time where she is able to glimpse into the future whenever she sees blood but if she do does so too often every time she does it it takes off period or it removes periods of her lifespan so um, if she does it too much, she'll die, basically, is the threat. Uh, it's, it's really good. It's really, 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 really good. Um, I know some, I don't know if they, I've heard other people recommend the series, listen to their recommendations. It's not super duper well known, um, but I do, I haven't read The Water Dragon's Bride. I, I will probably get to it at some point. But this one was just wonderful. It has a couple twists that I wasn't expecting. Some that I was, but even so, it was really, really effective. Um, there's somewhat of a love triangle setup, but it never really gets into that. And I think it it's better for that. And then, then stuff happens and then it ends and you're like, oh my god. That was so good. Um, so yeah, Dawn of the Arcana. It's 13 volumes in all, so I've only got four more volumes to collect. Um, which, again, I've already read it, so it's not like a super high priority for me to pick up. But it is a shorter series that you may be interested in, especially if you like fantasy settings that aren't isekai as well. Um, it reminds... I mean, this... It reminds me a lot of the Twelve Kingdoms, which is an isekai, but the whole slavery, um, second-class citizen type of storyline is very similar and very prominent in that. It's just, it's it's really good. It's really, 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 really good. Check it out. <laughs> Next, we have some ex-library manga. I got these all from Better World Books, um, and this... So I will actually have a video coming out very, very soon about how I restore library copies. Um, I'm not a miracle worker, but these are pretty easy to do and hopefully pretty interesting. So if, um, I should have that posted up in the next week or so. But this 
is the final volume that I needed to fill my gap. Um, and now I can catch up on the releases. But um, this is the long running slow burn Jose historical romance Kaze Hikaru. This is volume 23. And this is, oh my goodness, we get one volume of this maybe every 10 months, 10, 12 months. It's a, it's a once a year release. Um, and I, I've said it before, but I can, the only thing I can think is that they have a, Viz has a contractual obligation to finish releasing the series because I, I can't think that it sells well for them. Um, I'm just so appreciative that they are continuing to release the series. The next volume we're expecting in English is volume 28. So we're slowly, slowly, slowly getting towards the end. So the, the, volume, the series itself is, I believe, 42 or 43 volumes in its entirety in Japanese. It did only finish a couple years ago. And, uh, or maybe just only last year. I can't remember. Um, but this is the story of a girl called Sei, or Sai, who, um, in a Mulan-esque fashion, pretends to be a boy in order to join the Shinsengumi and get revenge for the murder of her father and older brother, who was a swordsman. She comes from a uh, summer, samurai background, but her father was a doctor, um, so she has kind of some knowledge of that. But oh my goodness, when I say slow burn, I mean slow burn. This isn't necessarily a series that like, I would recommend for <laughs> those who want like a, a really fulfilling romance, because it takes probably, I would say is a little bit more aware of her feelings, but it takes till probably volume 20 before our main male character, Love Interest, um, who is the historically, like, historic figure and well-known swordsman, Okita Soji. Uh, it takes him till probably volume 20 before he even, or 20, like, maybe even 22 before he's even, even aware that, like, romance exists in life. Um, <laughs> that's not true, but he is, he, it, I'm, it takes him to about that point before he realizes, wait a minute, I might have feelings for this girl who I'm the only one, well, I'm one of the only ones who knows she's a girl. She has to hide herself, obviously, because women were in a different position in society at that point, and also because, well, she, the, yeah, it's not, it's against the rules, not allowed to do that. Um, so her secret is kept by Soji and a couple other members of the Shinsengumi, but mainly, mainly him. And uh, so it's about her life in the Shinsengumi. I think it's really interesting how historically accurate Watanabe continues to be throughout the series. I mean, aside from like making historical things that like historical events and people a bit more you know, shoujo or jose glam. <laughs> um, it's all very, very accurate information. There's a lot of really interesting discussion of how, say, as a woman or as a young woman, would be able to hide the fact that she was a woman from all of these men that she worked with all day, every day. Um, the excuses and just like how life w was in in Kyoto and, and Edo and in, within these cities for men and women, the, their fashion choices, their health and hygiene, their, like, just their food, everything, everything, everything. It's really, really interesting, and I'm a history nerd. I've already gone over it on videos before. I even talked about it already in this video, but that sort of stuff is really, really interesting to me. I find, um, I find the two, the, all of the characters very, very intriguing. There's some jokes that may feel, because this started, the series started in the 90s, um, so there are some things, some aspects, um, maybe comedy aspects that may feel a little like, I don't know if that would fly necessarily nowadays, but uh, 
you know, I give it the leeway of, yes, it's an older series that has gone on for this long. Um, and standard for comedy especially change very rapidly. Um, but Kazuhikuru, it's... Some of I feel like some of the volumes may be going out of print, so if you are wanting to buy it or read it, I would encourage you to do so now whilst you still have the chance because there is no way that Viz has a large print run for this series. There is no way because I can, I don't think it sells for them. I think there's a the only explanation I have is that there's a con contractual obligation for them to finish the series in that they when they signed the contract for the license, the Japanese publisher was said, said you have to finish this series releasing it in its entirety in English. Um, even if it doesn't sell, you have to finish it. Uh, I don't think that's, and I've said it on like a podcast before, I've said it in videos before, I don't think that's a necessity nowadays. I don't think, like, no publisher goes into a contract or licensing something with the expectation that it's not going to sell. I don't think they were, they were going into getting the license for this thinking it wouldn't sell, but it came out in a period of time where, now, similarly to now, there was an economic crisis, um, you know, companies were going bankrupt, Licensing was a lot slower, um, and things just weren't the way that they are now within the industry and the global economy. I mean, kind of in the global economy now, but um, I think that clause was kind of a, a kind of a net, a safety net for the Japanese publisher to ensure that this work, you know, w would be protected or would be finished in English or whatever. I think it was a, a product of the expectations at the time. And I think that it's now meant that Viz has had to continue releasing it. They haven't been able to drop it like they have done with some other titles in the past. Um, so, and I think the other, I think the other main title that that is probably also been is is um what is it like he's my butler or whatever that series Hayate Combat Butler that's the series um I think this and that and possibly like Detective Conan there's some titles that I feel like don't sell super well for for Viz but they're steadfastly finishing them like when they can, uh, which is why also this series gets a volume released once a year. Um, hopefully now that it's finished in Japan, we may see that bumped up to two times a year, fingers crossed, but also I'm not holding my breath. It's a bit of a complicated thing, but I do really enjoy it, um, especially if you like historical romance, I would say give it a shot. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's worth worth a look and I really appreciate that Viz did try to give us a Jose series, a long running Jose series when uh, in a period where manga licensing just wasn't even like happening. People just weren't buying manga and uh, so I, I like to reward their efforts even if it was me and like three other people buy this series. Give it a try. Next is the other, well, one of the other library manga that I got this month, and that is Kakaishi, volume 28. This is another one that I needed to get to fill the gap, and this is a, a series I really, really enjoy. I've actually read, I read this, and then I read the other volumes that I had afterwards. It's a 35 seri volume series in all. I own up to volume 33, so almost all of it. And this is by Yellow Tanabe. I really, really, really like this series. It's one that I feel, and I've said this before in regards to the series, but it's one that I feel kind of missed the boat in so far as popular. It just uh, seemed to be a timing thing, not only in English, but also Japan, where it was kind of overshadowed by a lot of its contemporaries, which isn't a reflection on the quality of the work because I do really really 
really, really think that there's a lot to love with this series. I find the main character, Samara, really likable. I find his struggles very relatable. I like his overall personality. I like the relationship, his friend, the relationships he has with his family, his grandfather, his dad, his mom, his brothers, uh, his next door neighbor and childhood friend, um, the various other people who come into his life throughout the series. I just, and, and his struggle with who he wants to be and what he wants to do versus his responsibilities as kind of the heir to the family um it's it's really good it's really good and you guys know I'm a sucker for kind of yokai spirits styles stories which is what this story is about um the main the main story is that his family the Salamuras have protected a a, a sacred site basically called oh, what is it called Quran not cross. Um, doesn't matter. He protect, protects a sacred site in which uh, his school is actually built on top of it, along with his, the next door neighbors, who um, is his childhood friend. She's a year older than him. Um, and over the centuries, their families have been at odds, but the last couple of generations, not so much. They've worked together. Well, they've always worked together, but. Um, now there's not sort of this animosity between you know the heads of the families um so the reason that they protect this particular spiritual spot is because it's very very strong and then spirits or yokai will come be drawn there and the power the spiritual power within that site overwhelms them makes them very very dangerous um so they're basically not only protecting the site from that, but protecting any spirits and yokai that may be drawn there and stopping them from destroying themselves, destroying other people, things like that. Meanwhile, there's a lot, a lot of conspiracy and stuff happening in the background with the shadow organization and the kind of wider society of Kakaishi, like himself, um, that he's sort of being drawn into being involved with because he is expected to you know look after the family and this responsibility for the rest of his life it's it's really 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 good there's a element to Yellow Tanabe's writing that I find she writes just really down-to-earth characters who have very <sighs> I, I like that they have motivations and, and wants and dreams outside of the typical shonen protagonist. Our main character, and I, again, I've said this before a million times in regards to the series, but our main character, he, despite knowing that he will have to be a Kakaishi or have to look after this site and protect it for the majority of his life until his child um presumably takes on that that role um he's not trying to be you know the best that there is he's not trying to be you know the strongest kakaishi ever comparatively to you know like one piece luffy wants to be you know wants to be king of the pirates or naruto who wants to be hokage or like who you know the normal typical which and it's not a bad trope but it's it's not a trope that this series employs. It really, his personal goals, his personal dreams, his personal wishes are to become a, um, like a, a baker. A, he wants to make cakes. He wants to be almost a patissier. And that's where his passion lies. And I find that it's, it's really nice that he has a personality that isn't focused on his work and his family's expectation because um, I think it could be easy for him to be that way in if someone else was writing this story. I also really like just his his complicated relationship with the various people in his life. Um, most notably his his family. Um, not so much his younger brother, but his older brother and both of his parents and his grandfather. 
Um, I think there's a lot of really interesting mixed emotions there of, of course, love and respect, but also upset and doubt and anger and resentment and all of it. Ooh, it's so good. It's so good. I also, it has a quite large cast of characters, but I think they're all fleshed out very humanly. Um, I think they all have very understandable motivations, if not inherently you know relatable and I think it, it really draws the human aspect into a story that does have such a large yokai element to it which is I think something you need to do I think that I've said it before with yokai manga but there's always an element of otherworldliness to yokai that they will never they'll never have the same kind of moral compass that humans do and they're not supposed to that's one of the most interesting parts of them that's one of the most interesting aspects of their stories and of their characters but in by that same token there is also a real innocent humanity to a lot of them and i think that shines through a lot with this series i i find that it's just it's just done really really well it's just done really, 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 really well. And I really hope that we see more of Yolotanabe's manga in English because she has a couple and I'd really like to read them because uh, she's proven to me at least that her writing is just very... It captures the attention. Um, it's fun. It, no it really knows how to balance the action and the quiet human moments as well um it's very reflective it's very very self-reflective and i think that's a really great aspect to the story as well and to to this style of story where you are already in self-doubt but now having to reflect on that and how to improve on that it's just oh oh it's so good anyway yeah Kikaishi, great series, really recommend it. Okay, this next one is the last of the X Library manga that I bought. It's also the first of two really odd um, or unique series titles or books that were put out um, that I don't think people are aware of. Um, it's, yeah, I'm, okay, so I'm going to preface this by saying that this is a complete single volume. I'm also looking for, this is from an imprint, a Tokyo Pop imprint. Uh, it came out in probably 2006-ish. I don't, let me, I can tell you exactly when it came out. Um, it came out in 2005. And this is the first... Of only two books that this imprint put out before Tokyo Pop cut their losses and went, nah, that didn't work. We're not doing that anymore. Um, which is really interesting, I think. Uh, so this is Sweat and Honey by Mari Okazaki. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is like a little bit of water damage. It doesn't matter if it is, but I can't really tell doesn't look like it because it didn't affect the cover in the inside so who knows um but this is yes this is a very rare volume indeed um mari okazaki has a couple of her books in english um most notably is supply um or supply which was never finished in English but it was initially released by Tokyo Pop um, in English we got five out of ten volumes of that we also recently got a one shot from her from Viz which is like will I ever get married or something along those lines it's very 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 good um, but this is a collection of short stories um, but about women and their relationships with generally other women um there's a real sense there's a real complicated relationship that 
Jose has with, um, you know, women and sexuality and there's there's a lot of homoeroticism um, in this undertones which is not unusual for Jose but it's a collection of short stories about various young women and their friendships and perhaps more with other women um, and the perception that they have of these other women that they are interested in or that they're friends with it's really, 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 really good. Um, but basically, this imprint was called Passion Fruit. Um, you can see here. And only one other title was released under the Passion Fruit label, which was uh, Galaxy Girl and Panda Boy, which I am hunting for, <laughs> hunting for a copy. And there, it was basically Tokyo Pop's attempt to make a Jose only imprint which was I have a lot of problems with Tokyo Pop but I have to I have to give them credit where credit's due I mean it certainly was an element of like just throwing every idea at the wall and see what sticks but the fact that they would try to popularize Jose and that they continued to do so even after the passion fruit just didn't really do well for them um, is is really wonderful. And now we're seeing, of course, more Jose, Jose being licensed and things like that. So it's, it's not that there's inherently no market for it, um, but this style of Jose doesn't really get licensed a huge amount nowadays anymore either. It's kind of an interesting bubble. It reminds me a lot of Sakurazawa's work, obviously it remind of it's very reminiscent of okazaki like other other works not kyoko okazaki but mario okazaki's works but it, there's elements of kyoko okazaki in there as well it's not quite as horrific <laughs> terrifying as kyoko okazaki but i think if you can hunt down a copy and i can't say how you know prevalent these books are but if you can hunt down a copy and you're a jose fan then check it out because I think it's something that you know you might not have heard of especially in their kind of short-lived life as passion fruit I mean that's a pretty cute idea name for an imprint but uh yeah it's uh it's a bit of an anomaly and I'm really happy that I was able to find it um for so cheap but you can see like it's a it is a short story collection and there's a lot of um innermost secrets and hidden desires so there's a lot of as I said there's sort of a, a lesbianism or female relationship aspects uh, insofar as homoeroticism so yeah and that kind of used to be a lot of what this era of Jose was so if that interests you check it out it, it's not you know these aren't sweet warm you know heart heartwarming love stories um these are kind of twisted and and messy and emotional and wrought with confusion and stuff like that which is you know i think that's a part of life and part of living so you know don't go into it expecting a bunch of like heartwarming stories of friends being lovely to each other either so yeah check it out next is another really exciting find for me um i have been looking for this book for years uh that is not a overestimation that's not me being facetious i have been looking for this for years and it's kind of like it's still technically in print i think but First of all, it's a Shogakukan Asia release. So this is actually a Singaporean, like Southeast Asian release. It's in English, um, but it's not a series that was licensed for distribution in the US. It was licensed for release in Singapore, the Philippines, Vietnam, 
um, Malaysia, etc. Right? Um, so, whilst I think you can still get it at like a Kinokuniya or that when you are in those countries, it's not, I don't think it's on the shelves necessarily. And there are some titles, I, they're obviously English release titles um, in Southeast Asia that um, were licensed far before they were licensed in the US or the only licensed there versus the US. Um, one of the good examples of that is um, like Singapore and, and the Philippines and stuff had Silver Spoon in English for years and years before Yen Press licensed it for the US and you know, Australia and the UK. Um, one of their titles that they have that hasn't ever been licensed um, in English in the US is the Sinbad, you know, Magi spin-off, which continues to puzzle me because why we didn't get it because Sinbad is a popular character and the Magi manga is seen, at least to me, to be very popular. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but this is one that is, and this is from a creator I've already talked about in this video. This is a one volume manga. So it was kind of very obviously cancelled, but I think despite that, it's a really interesting, like it's quite complete. It's really interesting. It feels like a prologue to a longer story, but it's quite self contained. And that is. Laughter at the World's End by Yellow Tanabe. So, creator of Kakaishi, I had heard that this was released, um, and having recently enjoyed a lot of Tanabe's works, um, I wanted to get it. But shipping from Singapore, Kinokuniya, to Australia is like $25. I'm not paying that for like a nine dollar book it's just so much money um but oh my goodness i found I, I don't i think it's called book express i don't really know quite it's a it's an online bookstore um and i guess like a, a warehouse bookstore um website i don't even know how i came across this site i think i was just desperately googling because i check on titles like this from time to time um and see if there's any availability places like ebay but just like general googling sites as well and there i found a malaysian website that had one copy one copy available and it was like the equivalent of four Australian dollars to buy it and then with shipping it was like an extra twelve dollars so sixteen dollars in all and I was like oh my god I finally found it I finally found it. it's come to me oh and and I was I was had I ordered it they're like congrats like good we're sending your your book but I was waiting with bated breath because there's only one. And I'm not saying that this was necessarily like a super popular release or anything. Um, or necessarily hard to find within Southeast Asia. But I just was like, the, it would be my luck that somebody's already bought it. And it's not available anymore. Or there's some problem with it. It is, I guess, warehouse stock or whatever. Um, and I, I, I was just like kind of not in belief. But I was super duper excited and I kind of vague tweeted about it as well. Um, so again, if you follow my Twitter, you may have noticed that um, that was this is what I was talking about. But oh my god, it came and I read it and I really, really, really enjoyed it. I, the only other person I think I've seen talk about this is Laura from Manga Hoarder because she she did a big single purchase for a bunch of Southeast Asian manga um, that is exclusive to that region. This was one of the titles and even at that point I'd known about it and had been trying to get it for like two and a half years um, but I just could never bite the bullet on the investment, the shipping investment. I can only imagine how much it costs for her to ship to Canada 
But anyway, this is a story about a devil hunter. So there's this guy. He's got this mark on here. And that's the mark of a devil. Basically, um, someone who's been possessed by a fragment of like this huge monster that attacked the world a couple years ago. And he now he goes around and fights other people who have this mark who've gone who are like tormenting normal people he's he is joined by his little sister who's like really young she's about six years old very cute but because he has this mark especially in a very uh, prominent place right on his cheek it makes him a target of a lot of violence and a lot of bigotry. Obviously, people don't like these devil people. Um, but he beca he's, becomes what's known as a devil eater. So he absorbs... If The idea is if you put your mark on another devil's mark, you will like, absorb for three seconds or something. You will absorb that person. It kind of reminds me of Bakno, actually, where you can gain other immortals as powers by absorbing that person um and that's basically the idea like you absorb that person and then you get more marks and then you get stronger and whatever else but um the main this book is about him coming to a town where um one of this demon has been terrorizing the town um demanding for young girls and food and money and whatever else He's heard of their plight. He he's comes along and he says, yep, yeah, I can help you with your problem. Um, just, you know, give me this money and I'll get rid of him. And they're like, no, we don't trust you. And, you know, typical stuff. It's really good. It's really, really good. And as I said, it feels like obviously it's an unfinished work. It, it did only have the five chapters that are in this volume. It's not unfinished in that the story within the book is completed but I like with a lot of one-shot books there's a larger story that could be told here and I feel like it was cut short just because it didn't pull very well or whatever but I oh it's so interesting oh I would read so much more about this world I it's really 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 good and it it serves well as a prologue for this larger story and I think it's it's open and ended enough that you're like oh you can imagine these this brother and sister going on all of these adventures and I just I just want more of it <laughs> I really really want more of it it's very likable the characters are very likable obviously sibling relationship is very well done like with with um Kakaishi I find the that Tanabe just does really really well written relationships between her characters I think there's a lot of creativity here, um, and you can feel why there's a, you can understand all of the motivations as well. Again, it's just oh, oh yeah. It's I really, really wish that there's more for this this story, um, but it, there isn't. So I'm going to wait or hope that we see her most recent her most recent series, which I think just finished, licensed in some capacity because I. I really want it. <laughs> I, she's just continued to prove that she's a, a really great mangaka, and at least when it comes to shonen, she's got a really interesting style, really interesting elements to it, and compelling stuff that I want to read and continue reading. But at least in this case, there's not too much more that I can can get because, uh, yeah, it seems that this is it and that's kind of sad but if you are able to get this volume whether because you live in southeast asia or you don't mind paying a lot of money for shipping um check it out definitely check it out for the last of the quote-unquote old manga we have blade of the immortal volume or omnibus 5 this is hiroki samura's long seinen about a girl trying to get revenge for the murder of her parents by um, a group who's trying to take over all of the the sword 
sword um, schools. That's the word, sword schools. Um, and she hires uh, a man named Immortal Sugimoto, who is unable to die as her bodyguard, and so he's helping her get revenge or take down these these swordsmen who have kind of just gone all over the country, caused havoc, killed lots of people. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't really have to convince people to read this one. I think it's a very well-known, very beloved. It recently had an anime adaptation. Um, one that's, I wouldn't say a good adaptation necessarily because it's it's very quick. It tries to fit all of the manga into the story or into the series, which is a lot of manga to try and put into this the a show, um, a twenty four episode show. But I think it's complementary. It's beautifully animated. the The fights are, of course, incredibly well done, but it's not. I'm not going to say, like, watch that instead of reading it, because I do think reading it's still the best way to do that. Um, I also want to mention that this did recently be get announced by Dark Horse as getting a hardcover, like, deluxe edition release. Um, I don't know whether or not... People are speculating that it might have unflipped art or un reshuffled art so that it reads in the quote-unquote true right to left rather than left to right. Um, I mentioned this before with Blade of the Immortal. It's not that the series was flipped or that Dark Horse, you know, went and did that because it was standard. It was standard, but it was actually Samura who requested that. And so I think that because it's Samura's wish that... And he actually went and re... like re-edited everything and shuffled things so that it would make sense reading left to right. Um, you know, this isn't some evil ploy by a company that that just wants to screw fans over. But I think because it's Samura's wish that, um, and apparently continues to be his wish, that it. I don't think it'll be, like, fixed. I don't think it will be reading right to left like uh, it might be it might be and that might be their selling point to get collectors to repurchase the series because it just feels like really weird timing because the last omnibus of this release just came out a couple months ago um it just seems really really quick perhaps that's not the case but i don't know who knows um, f personally, I, I like these Omnibus a lot. I actually prefer them to the style of deluxe releases that Dark Horse has been putting out. Personally, there hasn't been a series that I'm interested in picking up that they've put out in a deluxe release. I've just, I mean, there's some of their, their releases that I am interested in getting, like Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service. Um, of course, I'm buying this. I've also been buying Mob, Psycho, and... I'm looking forward to their release of Ezoken and the Reagan spin-off. Um, but generally, like I there's for me there's no real need to upgrade or purchase for the first time either some of their series that they've put out in deluxe editions because I like I'm not that interested in Berserk. I know that's a travesty, but I'm just not that interested in Berserk. I'm not that interested in Helsing. Uh, and Blade of the Immortal, I'm already buying in this version, and I'm happy with this version. So, yeah. I mean, if that's something you want to do, absolutely, go ahead. Um, but with the... It just seems like really quick timing. It just, it just seems odd. Maybe in two or three years I could see them doing it, but... It, ooh, it just seem, seems very, very, very preemptive uh, to announce this new edition. Anyway, I'm sure they know what they're doing because I don't think anyone else <laughs> understands what they're doing. On to new... Well, I mean, I guess maybe this is an old release too. It's a couple months old at least. Um, the second volume just came out, I believe. Uh, but this is the first volume of the Penguin Drum manga adaptation. This is by 
Isuzu Shibata and Ikuni Chaudi, Ch oh, Chaudi. Ikuni Chowder and Lily Hoshino doing character designs. Um, this is basically an adaptation of the Ikuhara anime of Mawaru Penguin Drum, a series that I love. I'm a big, you know, Ikuhara fan. If you're not familiar, he's the director who did Revolutionary Girl Utena, Mawaru Penguin Drum, um, recently Sara Zanmai, and of course uh, Yori Kuma Arashi, which I picked up a couple months ago, maybe last month, I don't whenever it was. Um, and I, I said when I picked those up that I was wanting to get more of the Ikuni um, adaptations, the manga adaptations, as well as the light novel adaptations, because I find that similarly with Evangelion, there's kind of an interesting aspect of additional or various versions of stories when it comes to adaptations that aren't strictly like just retelling the story. Um, Penguin Drum was that. Um, Penguin Drum. <laughs> Yuri Kuma or Yuri Bear Storm was that by Akiko Morishima. Um, the revolutionary girl Utena manga was that. Um, the the Reo and Mabu like spin-off manga for Sarazanmai is that. It's just, I like when, and I've said this before with like various anime adaptations of manga, that I like seeing how different creators, how different producers and directors and mangaka take a concept and make it their own or reimagine it. Like with Fullmetal Alchemist and the two, the two different anime, like with Fruits Basket and the two different anime, like with Evangelion and the two different types of anime and the manga and the novels and every other spin-off weird thing that they... It's just interesting. It's very, very interesting. And I think despite my issues with stuff like Clamp and with the Fate Universe where there's like 30 million spin-offs and I don't have time to try and find all the Easter eggs, um, it's a little bit different in that it's just a new set of eyes and some new ideas with a somewhat... And a different interpretation of something that I may already know. I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm perhaps a bit too harsh on like the Fate franchise and Clamp and that, but I just there's too much of too much of that. I feel like you get drowned in that, and I'm sure you can get drowned in stuff like Evangelion, where there's just thirty million different spin-off manga and stuff. But but for stuff like this where there's like an anime adaptation or two and then there's a manga adaptation or a light novel adaptation and there's little differences or there's little different kind of in ways that they take the story and can show the story and you can understand the story or focus on different characters or whatever else. It just makes it a richer overall experience for me personally. So yeah, really this is just kind of the most recent of those that I'm picking up and it was very very good. Next, okay I'm gonna start with the new releases <laughs> because there's a couple here. Um, first is Noragami Stray God Volume 21 by Adachi Toka. Oh my goodness, again yokai like kami spiritual style of shonen, just really great characters. Um, I've said this before with Noragami, and I'm sure that people love it and enjoy it by the anime. I do too, no judgment. But I do feel like it's sad that the long hiatus between, I think, volume... No, like, I don't know. I don't really remember when the hiatus was, but there's a period when Kodansha was releasing this series, like, every month or every second month. And then we caught up. And then the series went on a really long hiatus, and then it just recently got off of hiatus in the last couple of volumes. And in that time, people forgot about it, which sucks, because it was very like popular in 20, 2016, 2017, um, and then it kind of died off, and people got preoccupied with other series, which is fine. Like, obviously, I'm not saying just stop reading manga 
because your favorite series is on hiatus or something. But I feel like being on hiatus, and the same thing with Gangster. I think being on hiatus for a long period of time, unless you're super duper popular and you're really well known in the anime and manga, otaku, whatever community, you can get forgotten about even once you return and you'll never really get to that same popularity. It's just, yeah, I feel like, and it's not to say that creators shouldn't take hiatuses. I actually encourage creators to take hiatuses because they don't look after themselves nearly as well as they should, but I feel like Hunter Hunter and like Berserk are super super popular series. The fact that they're always on hiatus is a joke and that kind of feeds into their popularity as well, but they're never they're never going to be no they never have to worry about being forgotten in the interim. Compared to majority of other series that aren't like shonen jump staples or that aren't you know just hugely popular hugely popular series um they don't have that lifeline and i'd i'd even say something like black lagoon which i think also just came off of hiatus the 11th volume just finally was released um like that's that's a, such a classic anime series it's such a well-known part of what a lot of fans really love because it's it's very bombastic and crude and and almost unique in in how it achieves that and of course it's got hot girl hot gun welding girl gun wielding girl which you know helps and just like a badass group of people um it's i don't think people necessarily forget that black lagoon exists they might forget that the manga is ongoing or that it even has a manga but comparatively the thing is like black lagoon where it ends especially with the ovas it kind of feels complete it kind of feels like if you don't get any more you're not missing out you have you haven't missed a finale or something but it's just a interesting thing that and it's interesting to see which series are affected and which aren't um anyway noragami is always wonderful i adore it i love yato i love all of the gods i love our our main character i love yukine i just oh it's so good it's so good and again a great series that shows off the human aspects of non-humans but the kami are even more interesting in that they rely on human belief just to exist. And so they're very reliant on understanding people in order to continue existing. And that's something that comes across a lot in like general kami, you know, supernatural manga. And I think it's a, it's done really, really well here, especially in regards to Yato as the type of god that he is and very small and nobody knows his name compared to like Bishamon and and Ibisen and things like that where they're so culturally known and celebrated in Japan that there's no fear of anyone forgetting about them. But because of that that presents its own set of problems it's just oh it's just really good it's just really 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 good anyway i love it check out noragami if you haven't and uh yeah next is the most recent volume of yona of the dawn volume 22 by mizuho kusanagi and really do i have to say anything about yona of the dawn it just is wonderful <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite ongoing series right now i say that about a lot of series but i think yona is one that everyone that i know who's tried it has loved it it has a really wide appeal i think it it's one that there's characters that anyone can like yes it's a 
I, and I don't mean to say this to kind of devalue shoujo or anything like that, but I feel like if you are avoiding it because it's a shoujo, don't. Um, it's it's one that I. It's just oh, it's so good. Yona is such a wonderful character. The dragons and Hawk and all of, all all of them are are wonderful characters, and I think there's a really interesting dynamic um, and personal political motivations between both the both of the sides which at first are very stark but as the series has gone on there's been a lot more compromise a lot more insight to how each side is approaching things and how their motivations aren't inherently different they're just the actions done to achieve those things um obviously have very different effects on not only the whole of society but more personal effect and it's it's oh it's so good uh this volume ends kind of the the arc we've had that we've been following the last couple couple volumes um yeah i mean it's it's wonderful and i think there's uh the character that was introduced also you can and I I like the fact that the series doesn't forget characters after their arc is done. I like that we see the same faces being being reincorporated over and over again because that's kind of especially when we're talking about like political maneuvering and scheming and and grand sort of war stuff and social change once you get involved you stay involved and I think that's the most important thing not everyone's like the the supporting cast is growing and that's a really really wonderful thing to see all of those characters being balanced and seeing how because of their involvement things change and dynamics change and what's achievable changes as well Ah, Yona is marvelous. I 100% recommend it to everyone. It is the best. And this, along with Requiem of the Rose King and Snow White with the Red Hair, may be the best shoujo manga coming out right now. And you may say, gee, those are the only shoujo manga that you're following right now. And I said, that's not true. It's only true... For my print stuff um and once or if any of those digital titles do come to print then it'll be more easy for me to recommend but until that day if you're someone who only who prefers print who only buys print uh check out all of those three series but yona is yeah i think it i hope we see another season of the anime i think it's due for it um but we'll see <laughs> It's a marvelous series and one that is ongoing in Japan. And honestly, f despite being someone who's always like, well, I don't like it when series get too long. You guys know me. I'm, I prefer my series to kind of cap out at like 15 volumes. 25 is really pushing it. There's not a huge amount of series that I follow for longer than that. I think the the biggest exceptions are Kakaishi and um, Haikyuu and um, Skip Beat. Why do I want to keep saying Sweet Blue Flowers? That's not that's so far off. Um, Skip Beat, uh, Hunter Hunter, and uh, I guess Black Butler as well. But I'm not like super into long, 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 long running series. Um, I've been reading some, but I'm not super into collecting them. This one, I th along with a Haikyuu and Skip Beat and these ones that I've already mentioned, no matter how long it gets, I'm, I'm going to keep buying it because as long as I keep, keep enjoying it, I'm going to keep buying it. It's not, it's no question. And if it finishes sooner than I expect, that, that'll be a surprise, but if it doesn't, I'll, I'll be happy. Finally, a whole bunch of Kodansha stuff, which I didn't expect, uh, or not, I didn't plan to, for it to just be a whole bunch of Kodansha at the end, but oh well, that's how life is sometimes. 
Um, this is volume 10 of Land of the Lustrous by Haruko Ichikawa. I adore this series. Oh my god. Okay. Holy moly. Plot twists. Just every... Like... Okay. You guys know I love this series. I have been singing its praises ever since volume 1. Definitely ever since, like, volume 3. Um, but volume 8... Volume, was it 7 or 8? Oh my god. Changed up ever. The the difference in character and it, we're it's called to question or called brought to our attention in this volume in particular how different our main character is from the foss of volume one to volume 10 it's just in oh my god there's so much it's it's so well done and if if you're not a huge fan of the first volume or the first couple volumes I would say my, I can understand why people might find the first volume or two a little bit, like a bit too slice of life, a little bit maybe too odd or a little bit repetitive for them. Um, I get it. You know, I get it. I feel like if you try the anime, if you watch the anime, you'll get a better understanding of how the pacing works or like why why that initial slowness is important to the series and then how rapidly it does change after that point and the first season of anime doesn't even adapt a huge amount I think it only adapts like three or four volumes and oh my god it's just even further 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 even since then it's just there's something so incredible in how much these characters have grown and how much of our understanding of them has grown since the beginning that I just really love watching and reading and I find oh it's just oh oh there's a lot of like Buddhist teachings and th I think there's definitely an element of like the Buddhist understanding of life and life achievements and the circle of life and our place in the world and things like that. So I, if you're not super familiar with, with like Buddhism and Buddhist teachings and stuff, it, it might clarify some things for you as you go through the series, um, reading a bit more about, you know, Buddha and, and all of that. So but I feel like that's not a necessity either. I think there's just so much, especially from a Western perspective, that you can reflect on um, because there's not a huge, like, as, a, as someone who grew up in Australia, it is predominantly Roman Catholic here, um, or at least Christianity of some brand is kind of the dominant religion here. Um, and although my family isn't super religious or anything, um, I've always gone to, like, I, I've had certain upbringing through schooling and just through general society that has impacted how, you know, we see life and, and humanity's place in life and how... Um, like how our, our minds and our and our bodies and our, our spirituality and all of that are interconnected in a different way compared to other religions, especially um, Asian or like non Abrahamic religions, things like Hinduism and Buddhism and Shintoism and you know all of there's a there's it, there's differences, right? <laughs> there's differences, um, and I think it's really nice to have that and it's not an overt thing necessarily but I think it is an important aspect of this manga that people may not have ever experienced prior to reading it I find all of the characters really interesting this volume though holy shit guys holy shit um I I say this with every volume but if you're not reading it you are literally missing out you are missing one of the most interesting, compelling, 
stylish it's a beautiful series as well just by the way but it's just fascinating and it if you have expectations or you think you know what's going to happen it probably won't it'll surprise you it'll continue to surprise you in ways that you didn't even think were inherently possible and it's just so good it's just so good and i i cannot wait for volume 11 um yeah um oh, oh my god the just oh oh my god cliffhanger as well in this volume just so much has happened so much has happened and i don't want to talk about any of it because i don't want to spoil it for anyone but oh my god oh my god um, yeah, anyway, this series is the best. Read it and uh, thank me later. Next is volume three of Drifting Dragons by Taku Kuwabara. This I've said before, but I've, I've been reading this for a long time. Um, I read it digitally and I follow it via Crunchyroll manga app there. This also got a recent anime adaptation. Is it on Netflix already? I don't know. I haven't checked because I haven't watched it. Um, but this is the story of a dragon draker ship, which are basically like, I guess whalers is kind of the closest, um, comparison to actual real life. Um, but it's not really about hunting or draking or the slaughter of animals inherently. It's more so, it's a food series. It's a cooking manga and it's about community and the relationship between hunters and hunting or hunters and prey and and the the respect for the hunt uh or those that you do hunt and and through that like eating you know the the cooking aspect is similar to like golden kamui um and silver spoon which i said before with this series where it's about yes they they're killing animals but they they do it with the knowledge that or the respect for that animal that um gets lost w with you know larger animal slaughter and stuff like that and general hunting you know it, hunting for sport and things like that it's not what they do these the quinzaza which is their their ship um their airship is they travel around to various countries and you know they they follow dragons and they they hunt dragons but it's a public safety style of thing um you know it's it's very and it the atmosphere the is just really lovely it's kind of it's hard to explain because and I said this with the first volume like it's hard to say like oh it's a series about basically fantasy whaling but it's really good like it's so uh, for a for a practice that is unfortunately still done in many countries including japan well actually really it's, uh, japan's the only one who still does it um and that does kill you know animals i hate to promote a series that would just or I wouldn't promote a series that just had the hunting or like whaling as like a net positive and you know handled differently I would not recommend this series but the way it's handled the way it's written the the respect aspect of that and again that the understanding the relationship between the hunter and that which it hunts that which becomes food and the respect that is given to that animal that does become food um, is really, really well done. As we've seen with the later volume, or these more recent volumes, volume two and three, the story has opened up much wider. There's still elements of them, you know, seeing dragons and chasing dragons and also coming across other people who are, you know, drakers. But it... It is more so a human story and rather than like, oh yes, we're going out to hunt and kill things and aren't we awesome? Look how cool we are. It's not that. 
Um, this particular volume has Takita, who's this girl right here, who actually falls off the ship um, trying to help a baby dragon, which is this little thing here, and her relationship with this, this baby and trying to get it back to its mother, or get it back to a, a group of dragons, a pod, I guess, or whatever. Um, and so, it, again, like, it's not that these people are going out to kill these animals for sport. It's a safety thing. It's a whatever type of thing. I really, really also like how Kuwabara draws or has a really organic and interesting um, dragon design. They're very squid -like. like a lot of them are non-European dragon-y looking. A lot of them are squid-like. A lot of them are just... And I mean it goes back to the allegory um, or the comparison of whaling and like the, the giant squid or the kraken and this these sort of Moby Dick style of, of historical whaling stories. That's not really a good example because obviously that's about revenge and rage and stuff but um, it has more so a feel of that as well. I don't know. It's hard to explain fully why this series doesn't feel gross to read if that makes sense um and i just really like this world i think it's really interesting i think the crew is all really interesting a great cast of characters i think the um you know supporting world and the towns that they visit are all very interesting as well and how they've adapted to the various airships that come in or the various dragon attacks that they incur things stuff like that like it's just really interesting anyway anyway drifting dragons give it a shot it's very beautiful and it's ongoing and it's one of these titles that found its way to print via i guess digital sale well i'd say that it probably helps that it got an anime adaptation that could actually put it in print and i'm quite happy that they did because it's it's a very nice, not quiet, but soothing, atmospheric, slice of life style of seinen in a similar vein to like Hakume and Mikochi, um, a less ver funny version of Delicious in Dungeon, stuff like that. It just, it just is very healing almost. Last for the normal manga, I guess, is uh, Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, Volume 6. This is by Mari Okara and now Emoto. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't say this enough. I love this series. I love this series. I also really like this tagline, Benefits with Friends. Um, if you're not familiar with Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, it's an ongoing uh, seinen, I believe about a group of girls who are all in the literature club in high school and they are in various states of exploring their sexuality, their sexual urges, um, you know, puberty and their relationships with other people, most notably boys, but sometimes not boys, um, and the complicated relationship young girls can have with their sexuality because in most if not all cultures female sexuality especially in young women is definitely frowned upon it's not normalized in the same way that it is for teenage boys and how that has affected their expectations for themselves and with other people and um wanting their experiences like how they want their life to go it's just really interesting i think um, mo most people who are most young women or women or female presenting individuals um, will relate to this in some aspects I think because there are a whole group of girls there are a lot of different experiences I don't think that um, for me there's characters who are very relatable in this there's also characters who are not relatable to me but i'm sure would be relatable to a lot of you to my friends to my family even um it's just it's 
it's so well done and I've said it before but I have kind of a love-hate relationship with Mari Okara. I really respect her and what she's achieved and a lot of her works I kind of go in a little with a little bit of hesitation because she can be really 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 good um, and then but then other times she can be really 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 bad um, it's kind of a you know potluck as to what you're gonna get with with her her titles and so when this was licensed I was intrigued and interested and definitely wanted to try it but I wasn't necessarily expecting to love it and I absolutely do love it it's phenomenal um yeah I think there's a lot of challenges uh, adolescent challenges and sometimes not adolescent challenges because lord knows that it's you know sexuality and exploring your sexuality and discovering you know what you you like or don't like isn't relegated to just adolescence of course not but and of course not everybody has like an adolescent sexual experience either so I think it's just done really really well and I Okara handles so many aspects that I think could have gone so wrong <laughs> really 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 well with this series um yeah I mean I I really enjoy this series uh, I got an anime adaptation as well just recently um check it out I think it's on high dive streaming um no maybe I don't yeah high dive <laughs> I always can't I sometimes I get confused with what's on high dive and then what's on Amazon Prime because I don't use them nearly as much as I use Crunchyroll um, but yeah, it's, it's marvelous. Um, be prepared to read about, you know, frank discussions or, and things like that, uh, upfront elements of female sexuality and adolescent sexuality. Uh, but it's, it's just done really, really well. And, uh, I love it. So yeah, I mean, it's in your savage season is definitely one that if you haven't tried it give it a shot I think it it just continues to be wonderful and it handles all of its very various elements um really well it's quite well balanced between all of the girls finally we have a BL manga or finally for the manga we have a BL manga um this is a one volume release um that I was really looking forward to I really like this artist this creator uh, she draws very attractive men <laughs> uh it came out a couple months ago I think now at this point I just didn't it didn't ship to me for a long time I don't know why who knows um but this is Liquor and Cigarettes by Ranma Rosaria. She also has, um, is Coyote? Yeah, Coyote is her ongoing, like, werewolf BL that is in print, again, by Sublime. She also has, uh, one or two, uh, Void is, like, digital only. Uh, she has a couple digital only because they are spicy. Um, this is also spicy not as much as those other two but if you're in for a sh short and sweet um like sexy bl story that like really i mean okay so this is the story of two childhood friends um who have taken over their fa respective families stores in a small italian village one has taken over a liquor store the other has taken over the, the tobacco store the cigarette store right across the road um they've seen each other every day of their lives basically um and the the smoker the cigarette store owner he is openly bisexual he's you know he's very handsome and popular and whatever else the liquor store owner he's kind of no, he's he's very likable. He's you know had his girlfriends and stuff like that. But recently, he's he's had a growing attraction towards his male childhood friend who has really hasn't made it any secret that he would totally date him if he asked. Um, but then so there's like a festival coming along uh, or coming on that 
there's this big competition where uh, it's like a drinking competition, a wine drinking competition or whatever. And usually all of the liquor stores in this town, they, the owners, they compete and whatever. But our main character, he hasn't ever done it because he's a lightweight. And he doesn't want to get out, doesn't want it to get out that he's a lightweight because, like, then people will lose respect for him or something. They'll think that he can't sell alcohol. Anyway, so he kind of, through a series of events, gets signed up for this competition despite trying to avoid it. But then he uses this pretense to drink, to practice drinking with his best friend every night. And, uh, when he does so, they're, like, obviously drunk. And so there's dubious consent in regards to alcohol here, um, if that is an issue for you. But he uses it as a pretext to go over and spend time with this guy. So, like, there's an, with Beale, there's an, always an element of, like, yeah, it's dubious consent, but the character, like, goes in as with as a pretext like they he knows that this will happen and he wants this to happen he just doesn't want to admit that he wants this to happen it's a very bl thing and it's not like it's not recommended in real life but also sometimes that happens in real life too it's it is like on the end of dubious consent but it's not nearly like as bad as a lot of the a lot of the worst tropes that you see around basically and anyway they spend up spend a lot of time drinking together a lot of time like you know slowly getting closer in their relationship trying to push push the limits until ultimately this festival happens and they confess their feelings and then it's not a problem they can sleep with each other without <laughs> without the consent issues um i mean it's it's solid it's it, you know, it's got an element of, like, which may be an issue for some people, but if you're used to, to BL and you don't mind a little bit of tropiness, or if you go into BL expecting, like, okay, it's not, you know, they're not always going to be, there's always going to be a bit of dubiousness for some of these titles, then I don't think you'll have an issue. If you like childhood friend stories, if you like Zarya stories our Zarya's work if you like her incredibly attractive men then check it out <laughs> you're not going to be disappointed if you like childhood friend trope then you're not going to be disappointed either um yeah it's a good one and um uh, check it out we have some more do we have more Zarya coming I feel like we do maybe I can't remember there's some sublime titles that are coming that I'm really excited for but oh man I'm not going to be able to recommend them very easily not necessarily because they're there's a lot of like really toxic tropes but I, there's like some Eroguro stuff in there like some some stuff which isn't as easy to recommend compared to like classmates and our dining table and stuff like that so um i i'm looking forward to sublime's upcoming releases but i like with all my bl pickups and recommendations and stuff i will make it clear as to what is in a story so you can avoid tropes you dislike with ease Lastly, we have a light novel, which um, this one, like with some of the manga I said that was like really cheap for some reason on Amazon, this was really cheap for some reason on Amazon too. And this is Durarara Volume 12. Um, I need a couple volumes before this. I think I have up to nine uh, just because I was buying it and then I stopped reading it for a while and just never got around to it. There's 13 volumes in the series, so I should actually like get around to rereading it and and rebuying it but or purchasing the rest of it I should say um this is a really skinny one though look how little it is it's like 170 pages which is like it's a little bit smaller than uh, a typical light novel but yeah Durara is the sister story to Bakuno it's set in modern day Ikebukuro in Tokyo and it's about the various people and creatures 
who live in the, the, the area and their various relationships with each other. If you've followed Naruto's works, if you've seen the anime, or if you've seen the Bakuno anime, or you read the Bakuno novels, um, or you read the Durara manga as well, um, you'll know that Naruto really, really likes multiple, like, multiple characters and multiple perspectives and multiple main characters and all of, there's, it's kind of a testament to how well he writes his characters and how well uh, Yen Press, or Yen On, I should say, um, translates both this and Bakano in that you never get confused to who's talking, everyone's got a very clear personality. Um, I do find Durara, like, sort of the, not lesser, but not as good, <laughs> uh, books series between the, this and Bakano, but I'm really biased towards Bakano, I love that series. It's very good. Um, this one is very good and there's a lot of really interesting characters it was definitely the po more popular of the two when the animes were coming out um and i'm really happy that we got it licensed because that was surprising it it kind of was this and and bakuno really were ones that i was really looking forward to but before their license light novels still weren't as popular or prevalent as they are now and I'm so glad things have changed <laughs> how the how much the the market has changed especially in regards to light novels over the last five even three years has just it's just been crazy how how different light novels are now and I don't mean content I mean in just how many are being released, not only digitally, but in print and being licensed. It's just, it's crazy. It used to be that you could follow and buy every single Yen Press or Yen On light novel that was being released. Really, they were the only ones putting out light novels aside from like the odd Viz, you know, Shonen Jump franchise title, stuff like the Naruto light novels and stuff like that. But now, like, between J Novel Club, who have an incredible service and some incredible books, I, I do recommend a lot of their stuff, between them, between Yen, between uh, Seven Seas, between Viz, even, like, they're putting out so many titles as well, and it's just, and Vertical, Vertical with the Monogatari stuff, it's just, there's so many, there's so many, you can't even try to follow them all um which is both a good and a bad thing i'm i nowadays i don't really read even a fraction of the light novels that are released and this is uh, coming from someone who <laughs> actually writes reviews for light novels um but there's just so much like I, I i can't keep up with it and it but it does mean that a lot of titles that wouldn't necessarily be licensed are now getting licensed and now we've seen a lot more of a shift to diversification so more mature titles titles that are like erotic titles we've seen a lot of shoujo you know light novels getting licensed it's, it's oh my god we're in such a different ball game nowadays with light novels but anyway that has nothing to do with durara except for it kind of the the license of this was just sort of at the cusp of before everything was changing and so yeah I mean I I really enjoy the series it's one that I really recommend Naruto's novels anyway um he has a Bleach novel that is licensed uh so if you're a fan of Bleach maybe check that one out that's a good good way to get into it um, and yeah, I'm sure if you've enjoyed the anime, you might want to check out the novels. I know prose can be a little bit intimidating for some people, but the great thing about light novels is they are short, they're self-contained, um, unless, I mean, I say short, unless you're reading like Tanya, the saga of evil <laughs> or whatever, uh, but they're self-contained and they're, they're pretty fun. I mean, they're made to be read quickly without a huge amount of you know, investment and not a huge amount of time spent on them. Yeah. So that is everything that I got manga-wise 
for the month of March. There's quite a few things here that were like gifts um, for myself for my birthday and for um, like kind of straggling stuff from February as well. Um, there's the new releases, but actually not a huge amount of new releases that I picked up this month. Not for any particular reason, but I think going forward, like with most people, manga spending and anime spending and stuff are not going to be my priority. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now. A lot of people who are worried about, you know, their lives, not just health-wise, but um, it's just financial security, job security, things like that. And I'm not, I'm not in a bad position, but I'm also not in a super good position so like with I think a lot of the community right now I don't like don't expect coming videos over the next couple months um there's going to be a lot of titles in manga hauls I do have a couple things from book depository most notably that are paid for pre-ordered months and months ago um that so I will have some titles coming in um, I'm sure next month I'll have some stragglers uh, of orders that I made in early March. Um, so there will be some things here and there. But you guys know that I don't have like huge, huge, huge hauls. Even with this, I only have like 20 something books maybe. Um, 22, 24. Which is a lot of books. Don't get me wrong. Um, but... I, I've never been one to have like 40 volumes or 100 volumes worth of manga to show off every month, right? Um, and that's of course not going to change. Um, I would encourage everyone to not have that right now. Um, but also, like this month, like with last month, um, my like this this really boosted my my count like if we take away the 11 volumes of high school debut i maybe have 12 books here maybe um and that might have going for like going into next month i again i can't i don't know i can't tell the future but i would say it's especially dependent on how um work goes for me or potential work goes for me how the world economy is going things like that um then you know manga is not a priority in the same way anime is not a priority i have enough books here um that i can read and reread and i have enough anime and that i can watch and rewatch as well and streaming especially um that i don't need to be making purchases and there's there as again again there's still some titles that I have pre-ordered already um you know months and months in advance stuff like Rose of Versailles which we won't see for another couple months um Blue Flag which we'll see in a couple months um just like little things here and there which will come through no no matter what but this is probably going to be a long video as my the my manga videos tend to be but I don't think my videos will be that long either coming into to the coming months just because I won't have as much to talk about. I can definitely talk more about individual titles. I'm sure my videos will still be longer than the average <laughs> manga tube video, but uh things are having are going to have to change and I think that's for everyone, not just for me. Um and I am hoping to make more non-pickup content for you guys anyway. You guys, if you've what if you watch my 3000 uh live stream, 3000 sub live sh live stream, then I mentioned that I was wanting to do more long form content in the style of like a video essay. Um I've been working on a couple of those, none that are ready to film or to do but they are this time has allowed me time to dedicate to those so hopefully i should have one or two of those out maybe 
Um, I am hoping to do more review based stuff as well as uh, I might have an art book overview and stuff like that as well but um, you know there's other types of videos that I can make and um, hopefully that will be interesting for you guys. Um, as always I hope that all of you are staying safe and healthy and keeping yourselves and the people who are important to you a uh, priority right now make sure to look after yourself make sure to get some fresh air don't go on a hike but just you know make sure to step onto your your veranda or your patio or to just stick your head out a window and gulp in some air because we need we need to look after our mental health as much as our physical health in this period as well um as always, I love reading your comments, so if you feel the urge, please leave one. I love to hear your thoughts on any of these titles that I've already talked about or talked about today. If you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever, love to hear it. Just please be polite. That's all I ask. Um, and as always, my link to my Twitter will be in the description below. Um, you know, I'm on there somewhat frequently <laughs> you can hear my ramblings about manga that I don't talk about on this channel stuff that I've been read reading digitally things like that um, you can see my thoughts there and yeah until next time I hope you guys all have you know I hope you all look after yourselves and try to have the the best of your social isolation if that's what you're doing hopefully that's what you're doing um but i hope everybody has a safe and healthy uh rest of the month and the coming weeks and just be a little bit kinder to each other as well during this period it's it's very stressful there's a lot of people who are not in the best position right now and i think we all need to be aware of that and to look after each other. Kindness doesn't cost anything is what I like to say. So yes, I will see you in the next video. Bye till then.